Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on something a little bit different than usual. This is a pre-war Lionel New York Central locomotive, which belongs to a buddy of mine named Liam. Anyway, he said that this locomotive doesn't run anymore. Every time he's tried to test it, it just will not move or do anything. So I'm going to try to get this thing running again. Not sure how successful that's all going to be, because to be completely honest with all of you, I don't know a crazy amount about O-scale stuff, uh, especially considering it's all AC. But uh, I'll have a go at it. Maybe we can get this thing running once again. I was doing a little bit of research on this locomotive, and apparently they were making these things... Uh, as early as 1926. So if that's true, this locomotive right here could be going on close to a hundred years old. Pretty wild. I've certainly never worked on a locomotive of this kind of vintage before. But anyway, why don't we have a go at it and see if we can't make it work again. The first thing I want to do is just put it on the track and see if we can get it to do anything whatsoever. Sometimes if you're lucky, you know, you'll hear like a humming motor or something and then you can get a better idea of what's going on. In this case, uh, we don't have a headlight, so I can't see if it's actually getting power, and I'm not hearing anything from it, so uh, yeah, my buddy really was not kidding. This thing really is not showing any signs of life. But why don't we try bringing it back over to the workbench and crack it open, see if we can figure out why this thing will not run anymore. So I've looked over the body of the locomotive and I've noticed that there is a screw on each side which connects to this frame. So I believe if we remove both those, this will all pop out. I also noticed that uh, it looks like I'm not the first person to have been in here. You can see it looks like somebody added on uh, a wire at a later date. And uh, also uh, it looks like these uh, contact shoes were replaced at some point. You can also see the uh, old Lionel logo for O Gauge Track, Lionel Corporation of New York. Wonderful. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, open this thing up. I'm uh, really excited to see what kind of drive this has. Uh, I don't know if engines of this era would have an E unit. Again, I don't know a whole lot about uh, O scale stuff, so uh, this is all kind of new to me. Anyway. Well, there we are inside, and. Uh, Right off the bat, those coils are looking mighty crusty. Huh, I really hope those are still good and that's not our problem. I feel like we still would have heard some sound or something from it though. This uh, looks a little suspect too. It looks like that was uh, the wire which was replaced. I'll check the connection. Sometimes people just tie things together without soldering them, so that could be uh, one spot to look for problems. It also looks like the brush springs are not exactly where they should be. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Are the brushes making contact with the commutator? Well, there are a couple of potential problems to investigate, so why don't we, uh, why don't we start there? Hmm. That's very unusual. There's nothing even right there, so... I don't know if that electrical tape maybe, maybe was holding this onto something, but that's very odd. Let's see what, uh, what's been done here. I don't really like how loose this wire is too. I mean, it's just a winding, so, you know, it's possible that uh, it's okay, but maybe this wire is broken. I don't know. Well, that all looks to have been uh, soldered properly, so I'm not too concerned about that. Why don't we investigate the uh, commutator, though? Again, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this could be a troubled area. Also, I might need a bigger screwdriver. Okay, now we're actually getting somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. That, that doesn't look quite right to me. I think the spring might not be doing its job as well as it could or once did. So there's one thing which uh, which is not so great. Let's check out the motor a little bit. Again, those windings, they really don't look great. But again, we're dealing with something almost 100 years old. So I really hope they're still good. But uh, I don't know. It seems a little questionable. Also, got some electrical tape there. I'm not sure if that's in place for an important reason, but I'll keep that in mind. Just gonna clean the uh, gaps on the commutator out. They don't actually look, uh, you know, super bad, but just be nice to make sure that 
Everything's in good shape there. Yeah, a little bit of carbon. And we'll just follow that up with the famous fiberglass pencil. Just having a look at the brushes here and you can see some interesting signs. Uh, first of all, it doesn't look like this one was even touching the commutator. It barely has any wear whatsoever on it. Uh, and this one does have some wear, but it's uh, incredibly uneven. So both signs of trouble. <laughs> Clearly not enough tension. This one probably getting uneven tension. I don't know, but uh, I'm glad we're finding problems because at least there's some hope in this thing. Well, I took a track bright and tried to even this out. It's certainly not perfect, but uh, I think it is an improvement over what it was. So uh, now we just need to try to sort out the whole spring situation. And one thing I noticed is that one of the springs is not even with the other one. So I think this one uh, somehow got bent. I don't know how that would have happened, but uh, again, another problem. Oh, that's really bad. So unfortunately, in an attempt to try to bend that other spring back, I ended up just breaking it. Clearly it was not very strong, so this will try to have to, I'm gonna have to try to fix that somehow. It might not have been the first time though. Something did look a little, a little off about it. Yeah, let's see what we can do here. Mm-hmm. Well, it's now quite a bit of time later, and uh, I ended up finding this in my uh, spare parts bin. I had to cut it down a bit, but hopefully this will fit, because uh, it's kind of the only option I have at this point without having to try to craft something else up. So anyway, let's try to install this part. Well, I don't know what all of you think, but to me that seems okay. Let's uh, compare it to the other one. I mean, it's not as good, but I think it will get the job done. Furthermore, that's the shorter brush, so if I swap these around, it's not bad. Eh, it might just be all right. Well, I don't know if there's anything else we could uh, have a look at, so I guess we may as well take this thing over to the track and see if it will do anything now. I'm not going to uh, install the screws just yet in case, though. Okay. Here we go, everyone. Well, it, we're hearing stuff from the motor, but it didn't run. <laughs> that didn't sound so great. Shorted? I don't know. Something's not quite right, that's for sure. Let's see if we can have a look in here. I'm a little, I did put that tape back, but I am a bit suspicious that something's off with the wiring. Well, that certainly was not the result I was hoping for. Um, I'm a little bit stumped at the moment. However, uh, there is one last thing which I think could be a potential problem. Uh, I saw some sparking around here, and I think there might be something going on right there. I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, there's a piece of metal touching the frame here. And even though there was only one piece of tape up here before, I'm kind of suspicious that maybe those pieces of metal are not supposed to be touching. So I'm going to loosen this and we'll isolate it just to be sure that that's not a potential problem. 
Maybe it is. Like I said, I'm not that knowledgeable on how these uh, AC things work because this wire right here does flow back through this coil here. So it, I don't know, it might be causing some sort of a short circuit. So I'll just, I'll just give it a go and see if it makes any difference. All right, why don't we go give that a go now? I'm going to be surprised if that was the problem, but I'm kind of running out of ideas here, so here goes nothing. Hold on a minute. It runs. I don't know if it's supposed to be going that direction, but... Uh... Well, now it's off again. What is going on with this thing? I am so confused. It definitely did run for a second, though. Let's see, will it do this? Uh... Hmm. Darn. Well, I've been messing around with the wiring, and I really don't know what's going on with it. It's uh, starting, but it seems to be uh, making a ton of sparks. Maybe that's natural for this, but I'm a little bit suspicious there's still something shorting in here. and. I don't know, frankly, I don't really like what's going on with the wiring here, so I might try to clean that up a little bit, just just to be safe. And then I might uh, give this thing a little bit of oil, but it is technically running now, so that's kind of impressive. I mean, who knows how many years it's been since this uh, last rode the rails. All right, well, I've cleaned this up a little bit. It's not perfect now, but at least there aren't loose wires going everywhere, so I'm pretty happy with that. Another thing I thought of is that maybe the reason the engine is going the wrong way isn't because it actually is. It could be because I had the shell the wrong way. So I think we'll try putting it like this and hopefully that will all work well. And uh, finally, I managed to find a vintage light bulb which might work in this locomotive. So we'll get to uh, see if I actually have everything all wired up correctly with that as well. And with a couple screws, she should be ready to go. Well, here it is all set up on the track. I made a few small changes off camera. First of all, I oiled the entire drive. Not a crazy amount of oil, but just a little bit just to keep all the parts so uh, well lubricated. And uh, I also added a little bit of insulation to the rear wire, which connected to the coil. I just don't really trust that electrical tape. So just to be sure there are no short circuits going on, I just added some heat shrink tubing to the entire wire. So it should be good to go. Anyway, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing will run properly. Yes, look at that. Tons of life. It's amazing. I mean, who knows how long it's been since this thing last ran. And here it is zipping around the layout. Absolutely terrific. Well, I've got a surprise now. See, my buddy there actually lent the entire train so that if I was successful in getting this thing running again, it would actually have something to pull. And now that we have it running, I think it's time to do the honors and let this thing pull its entire train for the first time in who knows how many years. I don't know. It should be something to see. Let's go. Ah, it's not even struggling. I'm hardly giving it any power. Not a problem. It seems to speed up on certain parts of the track, but I think that is the track itself. I don't think it's the locomotive. I think some of my uh, rail joiners maybe are not providing power very well. I paid $5 for the entire line. But yeah, I am so impressed with how this thing turned out. I'm really, really happy with it. And it really is just such a testament to how well they built these things. I mean, this thing could be nearly 100 years old. And despite how bad the coils look, they're still doing their job. I mean, I had to do a bit of a, you know, basic electrical work on it. But, uh, you know, the, the parts themselves look to be original. So it's very, very impressive just how well they built these things. It's just a simple design with quality parts over-engineered. You know what? It's a recipe for success. With a bit of work, I think this thing could probably run 100 more years. Who knows? But anyway, I uh, hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed working on it despite it being a challenge, but I'm happy to see it run once again. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.